Okay, kia ora koutou everybody. Um, it's just bang on 12.30, so we will, um, I will open the inaugural meeting of the Taupo District Council um, for this triennium. And we'll just kick off with a karakia. So I'll just ask for everybody to stand, please. Tuia ki te mauri o te whenua, tuia ki te mana o te tangata, tuia ki te pono te aroha, ki a piki, ki a iki, ki te taumata, hui e tai ki e. Uh, kia ora everybody, thank you for that. Um, first order of business on the agenda is apologies, and I know we have none, so we will skip past that. Um, second order on the agenda is conflicts of interest, and I'm assuming we also have none, so we shall skip past that. Um, and we're on a roll now, because the next item is confirmation of minutes, which again we have none, so we shall skip past that. Um, and then it bring, brings me great pleasure to be able to um, swear in His Worship the Mayor. Um, so, Mayor David, I shall ask you to um, stand and do your declaration. Much. I, David James Joseph Trawavis, declare that I will faithfully and impartially and according to the best of my skill and judgment execute and perform in the best interests of Taupo District the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as Mayor of the Taupo District. By virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15, 15 bar 4 and 16 of the 7th schedule to the Local Government Act 2002 to comply with the Taupo District Council Code of Conduct and the Taupo District Council Standing Orders. Thank you very much. Thank you. So just get your sign the sign, sign for me. Sorry, I hope everyone heard that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, everyone, and welcome again, everyone. Hopefully, everyone's been well fed um, and um, beautiful Whakatau earlier this morning. Um, as I said uh, before, welcome to returning councillors. Uh, wonderful to see you all back. Uh, and new councillors and deputy mayor to be elected. Um, it's an honour and a privilege, obviously, to be elected uh, for the people of Taupo. Uh, thank you so much for having the confidence in, in us all. Um, and I can assure you, we will make the best decisions on the best information available for the people of the Taupo district. Uh, thank you so much to my family for coming. Sorry, they'll hate this, but... Uh, uh, they, they are wonderful uh, to see my daughters and my wife here. They're certainly uh, my rock and, um, and indeed, as all families are here today, so welcome. Um, thank you to the excellent management team we have, the executive team, CEO, led by a, a wonderful CEO and, of course, the wonderful staff we here at the council. Um, yeah, just look forward to the next three years and uh, the new councillors, uh, just enjoy, enjoy it. Um, you'll have a wonderful time and some huge opportunities. Um, so um, I, I assure you uh, my office is always open and uh, always be available to, um, uh, to have a conversation. So I won't, uh, I'll probably leave it at that. We've got a lot of work to do uh, and we'll get on with it, as I said, next week and look forward to completing the airport, uh, Waiora House, transformation project, looking after Turangi, Mangakino, Kinloch, all those uh, beautiful spots uh, around our lakeside settlements. So without uh, further ado, Mr CEO, thank you very much uh, for swearing me in today, and uh, look, forward, look forward to going forward. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And with that, um, I will depart the chair and hand it over to you to oh. continue on uh, chairing oh. the rest of the oh, meeting. Oh, hell, I thought it was beating off, but anyway, <laughs> no problem at all. So we go to item number 5.2, declarations by the councillors.
Yep. Sure. I, Duncan Richard Campbell, declare that I will faithfully and impartially and according to the best of my skill and judgment execute, execute and perform in the best interests of Taupo District the powers, authorities and, and duties vested in or imposed upon me as councillor of the Taupo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15, 4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule of the, to the Local Government Act 2002 to comply with the Taupo District Council Code of Conduct and the Taupo District Council Standing Orders. Thank you. Just, um, uh, if the councillors would like to say any, anything or acknowledge anyone, you're most welcome to. I'd just like, I'd like to um, give thanks to the people of Taupo who did vote me in and I hope I can justify my place here by making some kind of good difference. Councillor Hannah Park? Oh, Karen, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Kwa au ko Karen Murumu Lawrence Fletcher. Me whakapua ki nei, ka maupono, me te tō keke atu, i hai ki oku pukenga, me oku whakawātanga. Ka whakatutuki, me ka mahi ngā painga mo te rohe o taupo. The powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as councillor of the Taupo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act of 1987 and any other act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15, 4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule to the Local Government Act 2002. <laughs> to be fair, I think I said everything I needed to say uh, at today's whakatau, uh, but just to reiterate uh, what an absolute pleasure and an honour it is um, to not only have my family here to celebrate this auspicious occasion, but also uh, to be here amongst um, uh, colleagues, I guess, and, um, and really genuinely looking forward to uh, the next three years um, working alongside one another. So, nui te mihi kia koutou, o tira kia tata. Kia ora. Kia ora. Uh, all right. Sandra Greenslade. <clears throat> I, Sandra Rose Greenslade, declare that I will faithfully and impartially, and according to the best of my skill and judgment, execute and perform in the best interests of the Topo District the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as Councillor of the Topo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15 bar 4 and 16 of the 7th schedule of the Local Government Act 2002 to comply with the Topo District Council Code of Conduct and the Topo District Council Standing Orders. Uh, yes, I would uh, just like to really follow on what Karen has said and, and the great privilege and honour that it has been to be elected by the people of my district to represent them and to bring their concerns and their hopes and dreams and aspirations to the Taupo District Council table. We are going to go through a very interesting period in Turangi. We are going to be operating under the Manufokohono Agreement with the Turangi Tukua people and the eyes of New Zealand are going to be on us and I hope to be at that table and be the most successful co-governance that we could ever be so that all of New Zealand will be proud of what we have done. Cool. Thanks.
Denny Eprihama Lachlan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you'd doing all the new ones first. <laughs> oh, sorry, I should follow the agenda, shouldn't I? Ky <laughs> Kylie Ann Leonard. Sorry, Kylie. I, Kylie Ann Leonard, declare that I will faithfully and impartially and according to the best of my skill and judgment execute and perform in the best interests of the total district the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as councillor of the total district council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other act. Those duties include the requirements under Clause 15.4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule to the Local Government Act 2002 to comply with the Total District Council Code of Conduct and the Total District Council Standing Orders. I'd just like to say thank you to the Total District. It's an honour and a pleasure to be here, and I'd like to say a big thank you to my whānau for being my enablers and chief supporters. Thank you. Cool. All right, I'll get this right. Danny Aprihama Lachlan. Koe, ko Danny Aprihama Lachlan. If I could nei ka maupono me te toki kiatu e ai. Ki oku pukinga, me oku whakawhatanga, ka whakatū tukui me te kmahia i te painga mō te rohe o taupo, the powers, authorities and duties vested in or opposed upon me as councillor of the Taupo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 and any other Act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15.4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule to the Local Government Act Hei whakatika atu ki te ture a whanonga mō te kaurehera a rohi o taupo me ngā tūnga whakahau mō te kaurehera a rohi o taupo. Kia ora. I just want to thank you for my father for turning up and my mother and my whanau who are watching online uh, with the, the YouTube. Um, thank you for um, supporting me. Um, I want to thank the whānau who voted for me as well. And, and finally, I just want to thank um, Nella Stebbing, who um, made this quarter wai for me um, many, many moons ago. I hoped to wear it six years ago, the last time I stood for election, but <laughs> it didn't quite happen. Um, but um, I'm very, very proud to wear it today. So, and thank you for coming today. Kia ora. Anna Mary Park. Ko o ko Anna Mary Park e faka puaki nei ka mau hongo me te to kiki atu e ai ki oko pokinga me oko faka watanga ka faka toki toki me ka mai ai nei painga mo te rohi o taupo. The powers, authorities, and duties vested in or imposed upon me as Councillor of the Taupo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information Act 1987 or any other Act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15.4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule to the Local Government Act 2002. He whakatika atu ki te turi a kunihira arohi o Taupo me na Tunga Fakaho no te kunihira arohi o taupo. Hold on. Good evening. Oh, um, <laughs> thank you once again for returning me to Taupo uh, District Council. I absolutely adore this job, and thank you to my fan family as well. Kia ora. Christine Catherine Rankin. I, Christine Catherine Rankin, declare that I will faithfully and impartially.
impartially and according to the best of my skill and judge judgment, execute and perform in the best interests of the Taupo district the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as councillor of the Taupo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15.4 and 16 of the 7th schedule to the Local Government Act 2002 <coughs> to comply with the Total District Council Code of Conduct and the Total District Council Standing Orders. Thank you very much. So I want to say too, thank you very much for returning me. I absolutely love this job and I do want to say to the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people I met during my campaign, I hear what you have to say and some of the perceptions that you have of us and I will work really hard to turn that around and as I said to you, every person that sits around this table does their very, very best to do the best for the district. And sometimes we don't communicate that as well as we could, even though we give it a very big effort. I also want to say, and it's probably not appropriate, but never mind, um, <laughs> in case anyone's in any doubt, I absolutely accept the nomination that is to come soon for the Deputy Mayor. I support absolutely Kevin Taylor. I respect him and I admire the work he's done and I'm absolutely delighted at his appointment. So I just wanted to be clear about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rachel Lee Shepherd. I, Rachel Lee Shepherd, declare that I will faithfully and impartially, and according to the best of my skill and judgment, execute and perform in the best interests of the Topal District the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as Councillor of the Topal District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other Act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15.4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule to the Local Government Act 2002 to comply with the Topal District Council Code of Conduct and the Topal District Council Standing Orders. Oh, I might use your pen. Thanks. Thank you. I would first like to acknowledge the love and support of my family, who, uh, some of who, uh, whom are here today and others are watching on the live stream. And uh, I thoroughly look, joy, uh, look forward to doing the very best that I can for the, for the Topal District and, uh, and our colleagues here. I'm, in, I'm enjoying their company so far, so um, looking forward to the next three years. <laughs> Kirsty Teresa Truman. No, sorry. God, I get excited, don't I? Sorry, I looked at the second name. Kevin Stanley Taylor. Have I got that right? Yeah, so far. I, Kevin Stanley Taylor, declare that I will faithfully and impartially and according to the best of my skill and judgment execute and perform in the best interests of Taupo District the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as Councillor of the Taupo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other Act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15, 4 and 16 of the seventh schedule of the Local Government Act 2002 to comply with the Taupo District Council Code of Conduct and the Taupo District Council Standing Orders. How long have we got? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, First of all, um, thank you to all of those who voted for me, to those that didn't vote for me. Um, I stand to support 
and represent everybody. I want to acknowledge today um, former Mayor Joan Williamson. Great to see you here, Joan. I um, also want to acknowledge uh, and express my appreciation for the support of the leader of our household, <laughs> my, my wife. Um, I'm doing as I'm told, that's why I'm wearing a suit. Um, without her support, I would not be able to achieve half of what I do. also want to acknowledge Pam McLeod, I see here today. Um, I, I guess I really enjoyed the first three years. I'm looking forward to this next three years. A comment I would make is one I made uh, during the campaign trail. It's not mine. I stole it from a friend and I'm happy to adopt it. And that's a quote. If service is below you, leadership is beyond you. And I hope to continue the next three years in service to the district. Thank you. Kirsty Theresa Truman. Ko au ko Kirsty Theresa Truman. I whakapua ki nei ka maupono me te tōkeke atu e ai ki a oku pūkinga me oku whakawātanga ka whakatūtuki me ka mahia i ngā painga mō te rohi o taupo, the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as councillor of the Taupo district by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Informations and Meetings Act 1987 or any other act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15, 4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule to the Local Government Act 2002. Very privileged and humbled to, to be here again. Um, just wanted to give thanks to all my whanau who give me support and also in particular just want to give thanks to all the councillors and council for especially the support that you give me um, in regards to my son Tama when, when I have to be late or I can't be here. I just really appreciate that. Afi. Cool. Yvonne Joy Westman. I, Yvonne Joy Turnbull, me Westerman, declare that I will faithfully and impartially and according to the best of my skill and judgment execute and perform to the best interests of the Taupo District the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as councillor of the Taupo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002 the Local Government Official Information and Meeting Act 1987 and any other Act. These duties include the requirements under Clause 15.4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule of the Local Governments Act 2002 to comply with the Taupo District Council Code of Conduct and the Taupo District Council Standing Rules. Orders. Uh, just a very quick thank you to my husband, Ross Turnbull, who's uh, always my right-hand man, and to Ben and Yvette Westerman, who, quite frankly, run the business when I'm not around and uh, wouldn't be the successful business it is without those two, and while I'm busy with council stuff, which I thoroughly enjoy and very much appreciate it being voted back in. <clears throat> Jonathan Renton Williamson. I, John Renton Williamson, declare that I will faithfully and impartially, and according to the best of my skill and judgment, execute and perform in the best interests of the Taupo District the powers, authorities and duties vested in were imposed upon me as a council of the Taupo District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other Act. Those duties include the requirements under clauses 15.4 and 16 of the 7th Schedule to the Local Government Act 2002 to comply with the Taupo District Council Code of Conduct, the Taupo District Council Standing Orders. Okay, 
Yeah, well, thank you. Firstly, I thank the, my supporters for returning me for a fourth term. I'm very humbled and I will be working very hard. Though, by the way, I'll also forget the ones, I'll forgive, forgive the ones who forgot to vote for me as well, but uh, that's another matter. <laughs> and I, I, Kevin Taylor got and stole my thunder a bit. I'd like to also appreciate and recognise my mother Joan, who's been a, strength, a pillar of strength over the many years in supporting me. Sometimes we have some differences of opinions, but that's <laughs> healthy. Also, my daughter Fleur and my grandchildren Sally and James are here today. They're hey. actually living in talk at the moment. And that's one of the reasons I'm standing back in council is I'm working hard for these, my generation, not my generation, but future generations and those young people over there. Kia ora. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, <clears throat> well done, everyone. Congratulations and uh, um, perfect uh, swearing on. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Item number 5.3 on the agenda is the appointment of the Deputy Mayor. And I have uh, very much pleasure. Uh, I've chosen to appoint uh, Councillor Kevin Stanley Taylor to uh, the position of Deputy Mayor. I'd like to congratulate you, uh, Kevin, if I could. Okay, there's a suggested recommendation there that uh, the council notes the appointment of the Mayor of Councillor as, uh, Dep as Deputy Mayor. Can I have a mover, please? Move. Moved move by Councillor Williamson, seconded by Councillor Rankin. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Taylor, I'm not too sure you've already had, a, had said, said something. Do you want to say anything more? No, I've probably said enough. <laughs> Based on the last three years, I might have said too much, and there's another three to go. So you'll hear quite a bit from me over the next three years. I'll leave it at that yeah. for now. But look, I accept to say it wasn't a role that I sought. Oh, stuff! I will say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I noted in the media that I was um, called the reluctant councillor. So, <laughs> like all good, whoever wrote that, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. Um, I'm happy to do the role. I'm happy to give it my best shot. I'm honoured uh, and I intend, as I said before, um, to work um, for the betterment and, and service to this district. So thank you. Appreciate everyone's support and confidence. Well done. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> so, item number 5.4 on the agenda is legislative advice for the incoming council. We have Mr Nigel McCaddy, Legal Risk and Governance Manager. Nigel. Thank you, Your Worship. So uh, we've done all the all the fun stuff. Now for the uh, the slightly boring stuff. Um, this is one of the, one of the uh, items of business that has to be conducted at the inaugural meeting. So um, you've been given a paper where you've been given a summary of all the, the key legislation that it, that affects you. Um, I didn't receive any questions um, in advance. So what I thought I might do is just go through and highlight a few of the key points. And at any point um, during uh, my summary, if you've got some questions that come to mind, with the leave of the chair, if you could raise your hand and I invite you to ask the question and we can have a discussion about it. So probably uh, the good place to start is at the Local Government Act, which is the key piece of legislation which now governs a lot of what you do, including um, other key bits of legislation which we'll cover. And I was reflecting on uh, what Craig Fisher said to you at your retreat um, the other week, and he talked about you having to now act in, in a constrained environment. And I think that's true to the extent that um, you're now governed by a piece of legislation. But in fact, you have quite a bit of flexibility in what you can do, and I was reflecting on that uh, when you were talking t uh, just now about your aspirations as councillors. The, um, the previous Local Government Act in 1974 was very prescriptive and it used to be that if um, it didn't, if what you wanted to do wasn't listed in the Act, then it was out of bounds. And the Local Government Act now is a lot uh, broader than that. You'll see it's got two broad purposes, to promote local democracy and to address four broad areas of community wellbeing, being social, economic, environmental and cultural. So within, within those broad uh, objectives, you, you obviously have a lot of scope um, to meet those um, broad purpose, but there is a trade-off 
for that flexibility, and that uh, is that you're required to follow certain steps in your decision making to demonstrate that when you make decisions that you've considered all relevant options and that you've considered the views and preference of your community when you make those decisions. And of course, the more important the decision, the more stringent the decision-making criteria are, and the better the council needs to record the steps that it's taken when making its decisions. So you will see this decision-making process set out uh, in the agenda papers which you receive from officers. And, and these papers will demonstrate that the council is acting lawfully when making decisions, and it helps protect both the council and also, very importantly, it helps protect you personally because you are entitled to rely on that information that you're receiving, the professional and expert advice when making decisions. Is that all? Any questions arising from that summary? No? no. Thank you very Good. much. Good. I'll, I'll move on to uh, the Local <laughs> Government Official Information and Meetings Act, LACOIMA. You'll hear that a lot, a bit of a mouthful. The Ombudsman said that official information is core business for a local authority. And what that really speaks to is one of the principles of local government in Section 14 of the Local Government Act, that business should be conducted in an open, transparent and democratically accountable manner. So be aware that you will be subject to the Lagoima whenever you are acting in your official capacity as an elected member, and that means that your communications will be liable for release regardless of the device that they're stored on. And highly contentious matters which have a high degree of public interest will favour release, so just always be conscious about that in your communications. On the other hand, confidentiality must be observed and respected, and that's, that's critical for good governance and good decision making. And a failure to respect that confidentiality may breach standing orders, that may cause a loss to the council, and that may expose you to personal liability. A word on workshops. These are by default open to the public and are most often used to provide you with complex and detailed information that would be impractical to run through at a formal council meeting. If a workshop is closed to the public, there will be a very good reason for doing so. Uh, for example, if information of a particularly commercially sensitive uh, manner is being discussed, and Lagoima will be used as a guide to decide whether these workshops are closed even though they're not formal meetings for the purposes of Lagoima. No questions arising. I move to the Local Authorities Members Interests Act 1968, or LAMIA. You'll get used to these acronyms, I'm sure, over your term. So you need to know about this act because a breach can lead to automatic disqualification from office and a criminal conviction. The basic premise is pretty simple. Members cannot take advantage of their official position for financial gain. So it's com common sense. There's two main rules. First is the contracting rule, where you can't be concerned or interested in contracts with the council greater than $25,000, excluding GST, uh, per financial year, which runs from 1st of July to the 30th of June. And the second important rule to know is the non-participation rule, which means you can't participate, discuss or vote in relation to matters in which you have a financial interest other than an interest in common with the public. That would be, for example, as a ratepayer. Identifying an indirect financial interest can be tricky. Although the Act does deem a couple of circumstances where you are deemed to have a financial interest, and that might be where your spouse or partner has a financial interest, or where you have an interest uh, in a company, for example, where you own or your partner owns greater than 10% uh, or greater of the shares in the company. There are some other situations where you may have an indirect financial interest which may be more difficult to identify. For example, you may be a beneficiary of a trust that has a financial interest in some business with the council. So you need to always be alive to those circumstances. The key advice is to come and talk to our team, the governance team, or your um, executive team early, because we can seek approval from the Auditor General in advance to keep you out of trouble. The Crimes Act and the Secret Commissions Act 
look, they're pretty self-explanatory, aren't they? They're your corruption and bribery offences. They're, they're well understood. We probably don't need to go into too much detail of those. The consequences, again, if you have a conviction, you would not surprisingly result in your disqualification from office. The Financial Markets Conduct Act, uh, not applicable to you at the moment because the Council doesn't offer any securities to the public, so we don't have to spend time on that one. The Health and Safety at Work Act, so the primary duty under HASWA, which is the acronym, is to ensure as far as is reasonably practicable the safety of workers and others who may be impacted by work that the Council undertakes. Elected members, yourselves, are officers under HASWA. So you, therefore you have a duty of due diligence to make sure that the primary duty under HASWA is being met. You will be receiving at least quarterly reports from the Council's Health, Safety and Wellbeing Manager to satisfy yourselves and demonstrate to you how this duty of care has been exercised. Council's biggest risk is in the contract and management space. Uh, this council is a very diverse and complex business. We have many external contractors that we do business with, with around 30 of those that we keep busy full time, generally in the roading and civil service space. So you need to satisfy yourself that the council's making due inquiries and taking sufficient steps to make sure that our contractors also are keeping themselves safe. Just to note, while you have a due, due diligence duty under the Act, you are expressly excluded from personal liability for failing to comply with this duty. Doesn't make it any less important, but just something for you to note. And finally, last but not least, the Public Records Act. Much like the Official Information Act, public records are core business for a local authority. You need to be aware of your obligations to maintain accurate records, which contributes to enhancing public confidence in local democracy. Again, if you're in doubt, liaise with our information management team with any questions you have about whether something is a public record or isn't. So there's lots to build on in your induction programme. And just before I finish, just a plug, a reminder that your session on the 8th of November from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. includes a presentation by Simpson, Grace and Lawyers, and they'll be expanding on things like conflicts of interest, the Lamia, gone through Lagoima, decision making and the code of conduct. Thank you Thank very you. much, Mr. McKeady. Any questions of Mr. McKeady? No? All good? No questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Nigel. Um, right, uh, there's just a recommendation there that Council receives the report entitled Legislative Advice for the Incoming Council. Could I have a move, please? Thank you, Councillor Park. Seeing by Councillor Westerman. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? <coughs> Carried. Thank you very much. So we go to 5.5, .5, uh, first meeting of uh, Council, uh, which will take place on Taupo District Council uh, on Tuesday the 15th of November. There's an amendment to the time, 2pm, correct? So new time of 2pm, Tuesday the 15th of uh, November. So could I have a mover, please? Thank you, Councillor Lachlan, seconded by Councillor Greenslade, uh, that recommendation uh, uh, for that first meeting. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, so just to close the meeting, who can I call on to close the meeting? Oh, we've got a cut of care. Yes, so we could all read the cut of care. Thank you very much once again, everyone. Lovely to see you all. We're into it. Uh, no stopping us now. Uh, and uh, indeed, the Deputy Mayor has acknowledged former Mayor Joan. Uh, lovely to see you, Joan. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate that today and everyone. Sorry? Oh, grandkids. Oh, you brought the grandkids. Good. You're still on duty. Good on you. All right. Thank you. Yes, please. Who will stand? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Meeting closed. Thank you.